All right, all right. How's everybody's Wednesday? It is Wednesday, right? That's God, I stopped counting days. <laughs> well, welcome to IREC Mindset. Uh, did you guys have fun while I was gone? Who noticed that I was gone? I was like, oh, we didn't even know. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, so we're going to talk tonight about a few different things, but I got a couple of announcements here real quick. Um, who's brand new? First time. Any first timers tonight? Don't worry, we're not going to like pull you up here. I'm just making sure I, if I should go through this or not. All right, we're going to go through it anyways. So there's, uh, there's a, uh, a lot of changes coming here to the fire center. We are launching a few new groups as well as reorganizing ones we've already had. Okay, um, I won't go through all of them right now, but um, obviously you're at the Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club meeting. That meeting will continue to be Wednesdays, okay, other than tribe building. Okay, so the focus groups that happen for the first one through four weeks of every month will continue to be IRIC, okay, and nothing is really going to change there. Okay, SoCal Exchangers, Exchangers, our, our uh, afternoon deal making meeting has been rolled out into its own group. So it is now by itself as SoCal Exchangers uh, with kind of a, a re re kind of a reimagined like vision uh, to reach out to all of SoCal, not just the Inland Empire, okay? Um, and we really, even though we invite people to come from, you know, everywhere, uh, we've realized that people really like to do deals locally for the most part, and all of SoCal is pretty, pretty local. You know, we're all used to driving everywhere. Who drove over an hour to get here tonight? There you go. There you go. So um, I always laugh. My, my mom tells a story where she went to, where'd you go? The East Coast? I went to New Jersey. New Jersey. And she had a cousin. She had a cousin she hadn't seen in like 20 years. 20 years. She hadn't seen this cousin, right? And she's, she's like an hour and 10 minutes away. And the cousin goes, oh, that's too far. I can't, I can't drive that far. <laughs> and they don't. They don't. They don't drive that like, you know. When I was, and some people, I, I don't know, I don't know how people don't drive because we're, you know, if you grew up, in, especially if you grew up in SoCal, um, man, you could just drive, you drive forever. I, I think I could drive for four or five hours and I'm just getting started. So, um, but anyways, I, I, when I was in high school, I had a friend, their family would uh, go on vacation and just to go from Anaheim to Corona, they'd like pack snacks and like get the kids all ready, like they go to the bathroom, it's a long drive out to Corona. And I was like, I always laughed because I, I drove from like, from like Gypsum Canyon to go to their house. And that was pretty much Corona, like Gypsum Canyon in 91, it's only one more exit, you're in Corona. And they were like going on like a, a road trip to go to Corona. Anyways, I always thought that was funny. Anyways, tangent over. Um, we also have two more uh, RIAs that we're launching, two new groups that we're launching. Um, CalRIA is going to be a policy-focused RIA, not politics, but policy. Um, we're not going to argue about politicians or anything. We're going to talk about policy that has to do with real estate investing in this state. Okay, and we're going to try and see what we can do to maybe help influence things in a better direction, not just for landlords or housing providers, but also for residents also that I feel like get lost uh, in some of this stuff where it's like meant to help them, um, but really it makes it even harder to, to build housing, to, to provide housing, all that stuff. So um, look for that. There's going to be a general call out um, in the next month or two for that meeting. So, uh, And then the Rat Race Escape Club is going to be like our cash flow club reimagined. Um, and we're going to do that once a month. We'll get in here and play cash flow. Um, and it'll have its own um, things that go along with it. We're still building on that one, okay? But it's not just going to be like the old... Uh, IRIC meeting. It'll be a, some changes to it, okay? Um, so if you want updates on all that stuff, you can go to firecenterhq.com or you can go on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Uh, I think we're even on TikTok. Um, Fire Center, at Fire Center HQ, you can get updates for all that stuff uh, as, we're, as we're launching. And if you already are in, on IRIC's uh, mailing list, you'll get in, information on that too, okay? Um, just a disclaimer here real quick, we are pretty much when you enter this building you're being recorded, okay, we have lots of cameras here not just for content but for liability and stuff like that. Um, so if you are not supposed to be here or you are supposed to be somewhere else, um, we have sunglasses and hats up front if you want to disguise yourself. 
Um, or I think where Roth is standing, there is no camera on that spot. So if you want to just go chill over there, you'd be all right. Um, but also, you know, we're not, I am not, we are not, nobody up here on this stage is any kind of tax professional or investment advisor or anything like that. Um, and we don't vet anybody to, before they're allowed in this to come in this room. Did anybody take a survey or an application or background check before you walked in here today? Okay, neither did anybody else. Okay, so just because they're in this room doesn't mean that they're a cool person, okay? We do our best to get rid of the people that are bad apples, but sometimes they still sneak in, okay? I don't see any here today that I'm worried about, so I think you're okay. But I have to say it, the attorneys told me, okay? Um, and also you are being recorded and stuff like that. Um, you might end up on like YouTube or something like that. Um, just, just a heads up, okay? So make sure you're smiling a lot. No picking your nose. Um, sponsors. All right, so we have uh, a few sponsors that sponsor the fire center here. Um, they pay for stuff like the lights, the you know the electricity, the food, all that good stuff. We're really thankful for them. Um, tonight we have three, actually four sponsors here tonight. So I don't do this every single time, but uh, for tonight, I'm going to give them each 30 seconds to come up here real quick. So. Mr. Lazarson, you want to lead us off? All right, Steve. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> give me the old 30 to 45 seconds. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here, and I'm a sponsor for the group. I am a lender, and I do quite a few loans for uh, group members. So we do everything from regular conventional loans, FHA, VA, we also do HELOCs for owner and non-owner occupied. We do mobile homes in parks and also on their own land. We do commercial lending, business, SBA, fix and flip loans, private money. So uh, if you have any scenarios, give me a call. We're, we're really aggressive. Our pricing is excellent. Our fees are low and just talk to group members that have dealt with us and you'll find out that, you know, at least give us a, a try before you uh, go with somebody else. And Thank you, you very you much. You just closed one with Beto the other day, right? Yeah, today. Yeah. So those of you know today Beto, we, today? Uh, yeah. Nice, nice, yeah. good stuff, good stuff. Thank you. And when he means they're aggressive, I think he means with like the rates and stuff, not with you. <laughs> so. Yesenia, come on up. Let's give her a round of applause. Yesenia Lopez with Inspire Escrow. Um, I've worked with quite a few people here, but I would love to earn some more business. If there's anything I can help you with, I'm always available. So thank you. Oh, we're a full service escrow company, except for we don't do double closings. That's the only thing. <laughs> so better than that, yeah. Work on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good job. Thank you. Give her a round of applause. And keep it going for Mr. Evan Brown. You do like real estate or something, don't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> There's a rumor. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I practice at being a real estate investor. Um, the uh, like I said, I'm Evan Brown from Sir Cash Deals. I will be glad if you run into a real estate situation or you're not sure if you have a deal or not. Give me a call. I'd love to uh, run numbers with you, go over it, talk you through it, see if there's any way we can uh, help you through that. I will partner with you guys. I can bring money and experience and, and uh, crews to come in and finish a deal. We're very much focusing and doing a lot of the things like with probate or title issues or uh, issues with wills where we need to get attorneys involved. We're really diving into that a lot. So if you know anyone um, going through anything like that, please give us a call. Uh, I'm always buying. We're wholesalers as well. Um, we, I love to buy from wholesalers too. So if you have anything like that or you're just not sure you need another eye on it, give us a call and maybe there's a way we can do something. Um, and uh, again, pretty much anything related from single family to mobile homes on land to uh, small units, multi units, do mobile homes and parks as well. Um, it's just uh, a case by case basis, okay? So if you have any questions, please reach out. You know where to reach me. Right on. Thank you, sir. And as the former half of Sir Cash Deals, other half, I'll just say ditto to everything he said. <laughs> um, 
All right, so like I said, our, our sponsors, we're really thankful for them. If, uh, if you're ever in need of their services, we have other ones also up there. Uh, Lee's not here tonight, but for solar and whatnot. If you ever have any need for any of their services, just please contact them first. Um, you don't have to use them, but we'd appreciate it if you at least give them a shot, okay? And turn this guy off. Moving forward, we have, who's been to Tribe Building? All right, so it hasn't, uh, we haven't, this is our quarterly networking event, okay, which, well, usually is quarterly, it came up a little faster this time, um, is when our, when our months have five Wednesdays in them, people kept showing up on Wednesdays, on the fifth Wednesdays of the month, be like, where's the meeting? We didn't used to have one, so we decided to make uh, the fifth Wednesdays try building, that is our networking expo, we clear out all these tables and chairs, we put out the, uh, the banquet tables, and we just network all night, okay? It's just a real casual uh, meet people. We usually do a little bit of speed networking, a couple rounds of speed networking. The idea is to get to know people, you know, and, and more than just, obviously we do a little networking in here every Wednesday, but this is one that is focused on, on networking, okay? So that happens uh, next Wednesday, the 31st. So we'll open the doors at 5.30. The bar opens at 5.30 as well, so, and they're only here until like 7.30. So for those of you that can't network sober, there you go. We got a bar, okay, and they got everything you need from beer to whatever it takes for you to network, okay? So um, just please drink responsibly, obviously. All right? And who's heard of this guy? Woo! Who went last year? Right here. All right, who went to John Shaw? Right here. Cool. All right, so obviously Pete's coming out here pretty quick. He will be here August 17th and 18th. Um, he will also be here before that to do some previews of the class. Um, he'll be here Wednesday night, that Wednesday. Um, I think it's the 6th or 15th. Um, also doing like the rounds of different RIAs. So if you don't know who Peter Fortunato is, he's kind of, we call him the godfather of creative uh, finance, creative uh, real estate investing, okay? So he was doing all that sub two and stuff that you see all over Instagram. Uh, he was doing that stuff way before it was ever cool, okay? Or I think the internet existed. So... Uh, he's, he's came out last year. We had like 170 people come out and see him at the mission or at the Marriott. Uh, this year we are doing it here. There's only about 65 seats available. Yes, Evan. Uh, as far as the uh, focus group that night, are you switching that? You first brought it up, so I talked to you on the spot. About I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Flipping and wholesaling, moving it or not? Oh, I'm not waiting. Um, yeah, we're probably going to swap. So next month. We're going to swap creative finance and the fix and flip group. So Evan's group will go. So Andy will be up on the second Wednesday of next month. Okay. Because Pete Fortunato is not interested in flipping. Okay. Um, and actually, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you brought that up right now, right in the middle of my pitch. I appreciate that. Because now I'm going, wait a second. <laughs> um, yeah. Where were we? The focus groups. Yeah, so. Pete's coming in the week early, the week before. The important thing is Peter Fortunato is coming to town. Yes. Okay, and he's going to be here for a week. I'll tell you where you need to go to go see him. How about that? Yeah. All right, so on, he's going to be here for. Uh, he's coming in on Monday, so he will be at Exchangers on Tuesday. He will be. Uh, at one of the other RIAs Tuesday night, he'll be at, or sorry, excuse me, he'll be at Exchangers on Wednesday, he'll be at Mixed Lunch on Tuesday. Um, and I'm gonna stop saying days of the week because I'm just gonna confuse everybody, okay? So he'll be in town August 17th and 18th. If you haven't seen Pete, he is absolutely fantastic. He presents all over the country. People fly out to Florida every year to see him. Um, so save some money, come see him here. Uh, he'll be here in a few weeks, okay? And he's actually building on a, he's, I just, uh, finalize the title with him, he's gonna go with Your Life Is Your Fault, okay? Which was my biggest takeaway from him last year. For those of you who remember uh, the email that went out after, after Pete spoke. Um, he really is gonna talk about more, if you went to John Schaub, he talked about building wealth one house at a time um, and putting, but he didn't really like get into too much of uh, like building out a plan or like a, a goal to do that, okay? so. Uh, Pete's going to talk a little bit more about that. He's going to talk more. He hasn't presented this class before, so he's going to put together a whole new class for us here on the West Coast. He just did One Step Beyond. Uh, he does his paper course every year. So I asked him for something new. So for those of you that have seen Pete before, or you've seen him many times, 
uh, it's going to be a whole new bag. Okay, I told him he's got a week to put a new a new uh, <laughs> manual together. He's working diligently. Yes, sir, Andy. Nobody Pete, thinks that. Pete makes me look so <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Pete is so much quicker than I am at all this stuff that he's just, he's a genius. And, and, and you've got no excuse not to be there if you're not on the cruise listening to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, again, limited seating. Uh, for those of you that were John, you know, we sold this whole place out. We were packed in here. Um, I'm going to actually reduce the seats a little bit from that, okay, because I felt like it was a little too... So we're going to reduce it, okay? So about 65 tickets, all right? Um, any questions about Pete? No? All right. Well, for those of you who don't know who I am, I made you a video. Check this out. It was longer than I thought. <laughs> There was supposed to be sound, like the THX thing that comes in. <laughs> um, anyways, my name's Rich Rice, uh, the founder of the Fire Center here. Um, I have been in real estate now for uh, about, going on my seventh or eighth year. Uh, I've been flipping wholesaling since 2017. Uh, I feel like there's, most of you in here know this already, but just a refresh. Um, that's some of the pictures you know I do in the background. Uh, when I'm not real estate investing, we've got our RV. Um, that's Caitlin and I, my girlfriend up there. And like to travel, that is Angela, Evan, and us. Where are we? About uh, eight, 9,000 yeah. feet elevation looking over Lake Owen. Lake Owen? Owens Lake? Owens Lake. Owens Lake. So we did a four by four trip. Evan had us on the side of the mountain, like looking down, going, oh shit. So, uh, but it was worth it for the picture. So, um, anyways, I've done over like probably 150 deals at this point. Um, Pretty much everything Evan mentioned at the beginning, that's some kind of mix of those 150 deals, mobile homes, notes, a lot of wholesaling, a lot of flipping, okay? Um, and I've been a housing provider since 2020, and recently I have 11 doors at the moment, and uh, I thought I updated that, but I am now at 100% uh, occupancy, finally. So I feel like I've had people, thank you, I've had people like as soon as I got to 100, like somebody like gave me their notice. So it's actually I've been holding for a little while. So don't jinx it. Yeah, I know. I know. Just take my phone. I don't want to read it. Um, so I purchased IRIC, uh, the Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club, in 2021 from its previous owners, um, and then founded this place in 2023 when we decided to not pay hotels lots and lots of money anymore, and we just decided to pay this park lots of money instead. So and Costco because I never realized how expensive napkins and chairs and <laughs> plates and trash bags and all that stuff is, and air conditioners. <laughs> so anyways, current projects wise, um, I am working on a few flips. We still have five, uh, I still have four mobile homes uh, waiting to be sold or closed in Paris. We got one in Crestline that is going on the market, hopefully Friday, uh, if we get pictures back in time. Um, we just bought, Lauren and I back there, just found a, a single family residence in Lake Arrowhead. We just closed um, last week. Yeah. Was it last week? Yeah, so it doesn't seem, it seems longer because we already have like people ready to go to work on it. But um, that'll be the first one I've done in Arrowhead. It's a, it's a really exciting project. So I hope that one turns out really well. Uh, rentals wise, this is where I had the 100% occupancy. So go ahead and cheer again. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, and ADU-wise, I am working on uh, one, or like an ADU and a JDU conversion on a, on a house in Running Springs. Um, and I'm also in the middle of trying to permit and get legalized um, other properties that are non-conforming uh, into proper ADUs, okay? So that has been a, the plans for that have been a process. Um, so I haven't really gotten to the actual legalization process with the county yet. I've just been waiting on plans forever. So um, we'll see how that one goes. The, one of those, uh, those non-conforming units cash flows quite a bit. So I'm hoping to legalize it so I can put that equity to work. Because right now it just looks like a $300,000 house when really it's like a $600,000 triplex. So it'd be nice to get the real actual money out of it. 
So, also, this place is always an ongoing project. Um, sometimes I probably put more hours into here than I do in real estate on any given week. So. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, so those are some of the projects also. That's the Lake Arrowhead house. It's an A-frame, overlooks a really good view of the lake. Um, that is one of the units up in Running Springs that we're converting. Um, and those are, the rest of these are mobile homes, obviously in different stages of repair. That is the one in Crestline. And, um, you know, just working through things. You know, we decided to do all the mobile homes at once. Uh, in Paris, and instead of, we thought it'd be faster to do all of them all, get them all done, and then stagger them on the market. And for one reason or another, with uh, the park and uh, lenders and inspections and appraisers, uh, that's kind of not really worked out as well as I was hoping it would. But we're still going to be, uh, we're going to be okay. You know, it's we did, we bought, closed, and flipped seven mobile homes in 10 weeks to where they were ready to be put on the market. So, um, and two of them have sold. So two of them are closed. How many other ones in escrow? One, maybe two. One, maybe two is an escrow. We've had some, some major issues with, with things. It's, it's been crazy. So no, issues you normally don't have. There's always, there's always something you, that pops up. <laughs> And you don't really realize, but anyways, so um, that's that. The reason I wanted to, what gave me this idea to talk about what I'm going to talk about tonight is that is a collage, as some of you know, Caitlin, raise your hand, <laughs> woo, uh, and I just went on a three-week road trip all around California. We did about 1,800 miles, um, three different states. We stayed at... The, that's our cat Chevy. She, if you can't really see that, there's like a quarter inch from the dash. And um, she fell asleep with her head just like hanging out there. I thought it was a funny picture. That's our other cat, Blizzy. She um, literally stayed under the covers. Like every time we started the RV and went to, and, and we're on the road, she hid under the covers, which she's never done before. She's, she's been in the RV many times. And she was just like scared the entire trip. And then that's us driving home on the last day. We got a plant at Costco. Home Depot, we, or look, wherever we were, we got a plant. And she was like obsessed with this plant and then all of a sudden she wasn't scared anymore and was like out here. She's a weirdo. So anyways, we went on this long trip and I'm not here to brag, okay? I'm just, I'm talking about something that when I did this, when I, when I started doing real estate, I only really got into this because I had, um, I had a plan and a dream. It wasn't that I loved houses, okay? Um, <laughs> I love houses now. I like the, what they do and what they provide. Um, but this road trip we went on, like I said, 1,800 miles. We were gone for three weeks. Um, I had people moving. I had tenants, new, new residents moving in. Um, I had some issues with, with residents while I was gone, um, with like internet issues, little, little tiny stuff. Um, we were closing on a house in Lake Arrowhead. Um, what else? What else was going on? Real estate wise. Oh yeah, it was in the middle of a rehab. We had escrows and everything closing in Paris. Um, so there was a lot going on, okay? But realistically, I probably worked about five hours total during that entire trip, okay? And the reason I was able to do that um, is because A, I set systems up in place uh, to be able to do that. I invested in long-term rentals that operate themselves for the most part, I don't have to, and I put systems in place to do that. And I have a great team, okay? I have a great team of people, not only here at the club, you know, Farah and Andy and Goodwin and Evan and Jim and everybody that ran, and all of our volunteers and all the people up there at the front. You guys are why I was able to go do that. So thank you. Um, but all of that was in place. Okay, it was, it was by design. It wasn't really like, I just didn't do it on accident. Okay, and I think a lot of that comes down to mindset, which is what we're gonna talk about, and goal setting and stuff like that. Um, where 
and, I, and I've definitely been led astray over the years. I got into other parts of real estate that were a lot more management intensive uh, that I quickly turned around from. <laughs> um, but what made me want to do this talk tonight uh, as part of the mindset focus was, let me see if I'm gonna, I'm gonna, get, to, I'm gonna get ahead of myself. So who would like to be able to do that? Is that something you guys would like to be able to do? You don't have to take a road trip. I just mean like, just peace out for three weeks and not have to worry about anything. Pretty much you'd, you'd all like to do that, right? Yeah, so we're gonna talk about like where that goes into. But first, you guys are gonna kill me. I have a podcast, okay? And I have been politely asking for people to go sign up on that podcast to come talk to me. Well, tonight I have decided that I am really lonely because nobody wants to talk to me, apparently. <laughs> so, instead of just talking to myself on the podcast, tonight, if you want to hear the rest of this thing that I put together tonight, and you want to get into this plan of how you can do the, a trip like that, I need five people to scan that code and sign up to come talk to me on my podcast, and we're going to stay here until five people do that. So, get out your phones, scan the code, and if you've already been on it, you don't count. It's got to be five new people. And what we do on the podcast is we talk about, we talk about mindset, for one. We talk about real estate. The whole purpose of this podcast, guys, is to see what real people do to become financially independent or get into real estate or be successful in real estate, Okay. It's not about me talking about how I, do, how I buy and flip houses and all that stuff. I want to hear about your journey, okay? Like, why are you here? What have you been doing with your whole life that brought you to, to this or why you want to go into real estate, okay? So um, the podcast is about you, and that might terrify you. It's okay. I will ask you questions. I don't bite, okay? Nobody's going to, like, be making fun of you or anything like that, okay? So... Who's, it, who's done it? Ricardo? All right. Andy, you already did it? Yeah. Andy, you don't count. You've already been on it. I didn't do that. You didn't expect that was going to do it. Okay, Andy, you count for a half one. I thought you meant who's already done a podcast. Yeah. We got one. I signed up, but it's surprising. You were you already on the list. I know. Let's see here. Yesenia? Yay, Yesenia. Let's go. No, I'm going to start calling people out. Lauren, you've been doing stuff a while. You were just telling me about all this, this property you bought and this property you bought. And yeah, but you've done a lot since then. I think we need a follow-up. I think we need a follow-up. Am I going to be nice? Do I look like a nice guy? No. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be nice. It's a, good, it's a good time. Look at that. Does that look like a, a mean guy? I'm, I'm the one on the left, by the way. The one in the blue shirt looks a little like. I mean, the one on the right, maybe. It's not Jim that's hosting it. It's me. Roy? All right. Who else we got? How many we got? I haven't signed up. I tried. I don't know. Sharon? Sharon tried? Let's see here. We got Evan. Evan's the only one that's come through. You guys think you're gonna like, like play me? It doesn't lie. I get a text as soon as somebody signs up. Hey Rick, it, it's harder for double two workers though, because the latest is at 2 p.m. What about the weekend? Saturdays and Sundays are open too. Oh really? Yeah. Is it the latest? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's open August um, Saturday, August third. What else you got, Alfonso? <laughs> I can stand here all night. We don't have to have a meeting. <laughs> Who signed up? All right. I don't know. Good one's texting me. I don't think it's for the podcast. All right. I got Evan. I got Ruby. Come on, people. I'm typing fast. Who else we got? 
Mike? Come on. Oh, bullshit. I tell you what, the, if you're sitting there thinking I don't got anything to say, I promise you that the, the 45 minutes we're going to talk goes by instantly. Okay? But I really, really, it's very important to me, guys. Like, I, it's, it's, I'm not just doing this for fun. It takes a lot of work. I put a lot of time into this. I'm doing this to get your story out there. Okay? I want people to understand that this isn't just a business for rich people and people that have a billion properties and have done 10,000 subject to deals and, you know, how they, they, whatever, and bought their Lambo and Ferrari and whatever. Okay? It's, it's for real people to hear a real story. He's almost done. <laughs> All right. I sent you a text instead. <laughs> okay. Sharon, I'll help you out. I know you're good for it. <laughs> One more. You got it? Yeah. All right. Let's give everybody a round of applause. We have rolls and bikinis? Well, don't shoot for a good podcast, you know, so you can show yourself. Yeah, I know. I know. I could go rent one. Yeah, that's, I think that's all tough. Caitlin's got a bikini I could borrow. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. Seriously. Seriously. Um, and it is virtual now, so you don't have to even come down to the office. We just set you up. We do it on, online on Zoom. Okay? It's really easy. But, but in person is more fun. Yeah. We can do it in person yeah. if you want. I really do it but, in person. Okay. Well, I still got the whole set up both ways, so either way. All right, cool. Um, and if you guys, I mean, if you're on the fence and you want to check out and see what kind of, you know, see what kind of questions I ask and all that stuff, just go on YouTube, go on Spotify. Like I said, it's, it's more about stories of people just like us, you know, trying to obtain financial independence in real estate, okay? Who's been on the podcast? Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. And it was several years ago, and she went back and watched it again. Oh, yeah. And it was amazing when was she about a year ago. about how far she's come. Oh, yeah. It was probably about a year and a half ago. I mean, I started doing this when, when we got this place. So there was like 30 episodes on there. So, again, you know, people that started off as a nurse, now they're doing real estate. You know, Alfonso, you were, if I remember correctly, you were like a, uh, like a, I'm blanking on the term, but the like production uh, plant manager. Plant manager. Yeah. You know, now you what? You're building houses in Mexico, and you got stuff here. Yes. Now you were just start. You were just starting out. Totally. You know, back then. So, you know, like I said, it's 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 like kind of like a, a bookmark too, of where you started. You know, you can look back and say like, holy crap, like, you know, come a long way. All right. Anyways, I'll stop talking about my podcast now. All right. So the agenda for tonight is to talk about the time value of time. Okay, I'm sure who's heard of the time value of money? Okay, if you haven't, go take Andy's class or mine. We'll talk about the time value of money. Money compounds, okay, but the time value of money is something that you can go get more of. You can go get more money. You can always go get more money, okay? Can you go get more time? No. Not of your time. Okay. Uh, what's a fire number? Okay, we're going to talk about that too. Um, and then how to come up with that number, at least like kind of a bird's eye view of how to come up with that number for those of you that haven't uh, been introduced to this before. Okay? Um, so, time value of time. Can you get more money? Yes. What do you do to go get more money? You come to Wednesdays at noon. What if you wanted to earn more money? What do you have to go do? Work. And work, what does work take? Uh, Time. Okay, can you get more houses? Yes. Yeah, we can all get more houses. Um, same thing, what does getting more houses takes? Time. Time and? Money. 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 Okay. Can you go get more time? I asked that question a little prematurely, I guess. No. Can you go get more time? Not your own. You can go buy other people's time. But for the most part, you're not going to get your time back. So is it important to make sure that your time is spent wisely? Yeah. Okay. So 
How many of you, and I, I just, I really just learned this lesson recently, again, why I was able to do this trip. I hired for the, I've been trying to do it for a while. I actually hired one a while ago. It didn't work out. But I've been trying to find a good uh, virtual assistant for years, okay? Because I spend, who in their business spends, would you say like 80% of your time is doing stuff that is worth what your brain is worth or that you spend 80% of your time doing something else that is either you could pay somebody like a minimum wage to do. So those of you that spend 80% of your time on really creative, really good, like fulfilling stuff, raise your hand. Andy? William? What do you do? Um, music production. All right, cool. Um, you play an instrument? Yeah. Yeah, well, nice. Good stuff. All right. There was another couple of musicians here that uh, you just ran into her the other day. What was her name? The girl you ran into that you gave a ride home. Oh, uh, Molina. 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 Yeah. Molina. Yeah. So, um, anyways, uh, who spends 80% of their time doing stuff they'd rather pay somebody else to do? <laughs> yeah. It took me a long time to learn that lesson of, like, because I would, I would spend a lot, a lot of time on doing something. Yeah, I, I kind of like, like, learning how to do it, but I didn't need to. I don't need to learn how to be a, how to make videos of intro videos on Canva, you know, that make all this little, like I could have my VA do that, okay? I did that one, so I guess I haven't learned that one lesson yet, but, <laughs> um, but updating QuickBooks, okay? Something like updating QuickBooks. I spend a ton of time going through stuff on QuickBooks that I've learned, I just, I just basically assigned to my VA. I'd have everything go into a receipts folder He's got access to QuickBooks. He just goes and tags everything. I just put a little note. He goes in and deals with the, the terrible UI that is, that is QuickBooks. Who's used QuickBooks here? Is it very intuitive? Or do you feel like you're clicking 17 times to get to something that should be twice? Yeah, so I let my VA do that. Um, countless other tasks throughout the day that um, I just don't need to be doing anymore. Like that, that, that's, and that's the stuff that bogs you down from really doing like your most creative stuff of what, you know, doing, putting deals together, not spending hours and hours and hours making the postcard to send out. Let somebody else do that, okay? That's how you get more time as far as that goes, okay? Um, with that in mind, if you had all the money like right now, what would you do with your time? Like if, let's say everybody in this room is financially free, you don't gotta worry about it. Your bills are paid. You got it all the time in the world. What would you do? Travel. You travel. Who would travel? Traveling school, right? We all like to travel. Anybody else? What'd you do? Build businesses. Build businesses? Okay. Spend time with those people I love. Spend time with the people you love. Spend okay. time in the community. Spend time in the community. Okay? Interfering in young people's financial affairs. <laughs> so they get on this train a lot sooner than most of us did. And if they're anything like I was, they'll probably be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, only 69 million. it's only 69 million. Anybody else? What would you call that? Coach Freedom. Damn, did you see my slides? <laughs> freedom. Who wants freedom? Should I do my best Mel Gibson impression? Yes. I don't want to blow your ears out. <laughs> freedom! <laughs> freedom, that's really all we're talking about here. It's the freedom to choose, okay? The freedom to choose what you want to do with your time, whatever that is. Um, so, and that freedom, unfortunately, like, you, you know, unless you're born into some money, uh, you know, you're gonna eventually have to earn that freedom. Okay, or earn it through investments or long-term retirement or whatever. But the, but the number that we call the FIRE number, it's your financial independence to real estate. We all know what that means. So your, your FIRE number is basically what you need is your freedom number. Okay, There's, the people call it different things. Okay, um, we call it the FIRE number. Other people call it the freedom number. 
Um, there's, there's different names for it, but it's all the same stuff, okay? Um, it's essentially like what your passive income that you need to cover your monthly expenses, okay? And it's, and you can do this a, a couple of different ways. You don't have to uh, do it exactly the way I do it. Um, some people do it yearly, like a, a, an annual number, or some people break it down to a monthly number. Um, some people set the number like to be their, they, they get their like rock bottom expenses, you know, rent, car payment, gas, all that stuff, and then the whatever you want for like your fund money. But I do it basically like your whole everything, okay? Um, and there's different types of, I've never really talked about this here, I was trying to always keep it simple. There is different types of fire, okay? And, and if you guys are wondering where I got financial independence through real estate from, there is a, a, a movement that's been going on throughout the country for a while uh, called uh, FIRE, but it stands for Financial Independence Retire Early, okay? And generally, the way that they teach you how to do this is that you either massively reduce your expenses or you make a shitload of money or you do both, okay? And when I say both, is that, is that usually it's, it's a, it's a, it's basically the idea that if you are making a lot of, you know, they make $200,000, let's say a year, okay? You live off of Fifty thousand dollars, and you sock away the other hundred and twenty after taxes, okay? And then you bank that in the stock market at seven, eight percent in a mutual fund for thirty, forty something years, and and then you retire. And then you basically like the more money you make and more money you put in there, you retire earlier than the normal retirement age. Okay, so instead of putting 10% of your paycheck into the stock market for 40 years from now or 30 years from now when you can retire, you put a lot more in so that you can retire like in your 40s. But I mean, you gotta start this pretty, pretty early, okay? Um, for a lot of us, it's a little late. It's a little late to, to be able to put away that much money so where the, the time value of money, the interest stacks to make that possible, right? Um, what got me interested in all this and to do it with real estate is that I still, I still think real estate, and that's why we made it the, the name of the center of the financial independence through real estate, is I still think real estate is pretty much one of the only ways that you can do it quickly, okay? That you can become financially independent within, and I'm not talking like you gotta go flip a thousand houses in the next five years, but I think that within five years, if you really do it, five to 10 years, I think anybody can be financially independent through real estate, okay? But it takes some discipline, it takes goals, it takes a lot of hard work. Um, it is definitely not easy. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme by any means. Uh, if anybody is out there trying to sell you a, like real estate is a quick way, just do this, do this, do this, it's super fast, I think they're probably full of it, okay? The only way you're gonna get rich fast in real estate is if you are just godlike at flipping multi-million dollar properties and you just come out of the gate swinging and you do 10 of those a year for a couple of years. Sure, you can do it a lot faster, but you gotta invest that money smartly because <laughs> that money's gonna go away. So anyways, I'm kind of diverging a little bit, but fire, just kind of your standard fire is like kind of pretty much how you're living right now, probably. Okay, it's like your basic expenses. You're just, you know, you're living a, you know, probably most in this room are probably living a, you know, middle class style of life that you'll be totally content with continuing on if you didn't have to work. Am I wrong? Does that sound like kind of where everybody's probably somewhere at? Okay. So, or you could do what they call lean fire. Okay. And lean fire is you kind of stay where you're at right now, but you, you, you say, you know what? If I didn't have to work, like if I, if I, if I, let's say I could get rid of the, I could get, I could, I could drive an older car. Okay, I don't need the, I don't need the Lexus. I don't need the brand new car every two years. I don't need the Tesla, whatever. Okay, like I could totally be fine by reducing my expenses by a significant amount. Okay, you like to eat out all the time, maybe. You could probably reduce that. Okay, Lean Fire is reducing your, basically your standard, not standard of living, but your monthly expenses to a point that is like uh, just above like where you need to almost survive, okay? That's extreme lean fire, 
Okay, and then, of course, there's going to be in the middle. So if this if this feels like you know you, you don't have to fit like inside each one of these, okay, you can be all over. The, you, know, you can be in between. All right. So maybe you want to reduce a little bit, but you don't want to be like right below your or right above your means. You know, you want to still have like you want to go to the movies a lot. Maybe you have a hobby that's expensive that you don't want to give up. Okay, you can adjust. The great thing is is you can adjust. Okay, and Fat Fire is the opposite. Okay, so like you want you want the Lambo. Okay, you want the Rari, you want to, you want to, you want to travel, like, you want to go to the Ritz, okay, like, you're not messing around, like, you, you got dreams, and, and that's okay, but that means your fire number is going to be a lot higher, okay, and it might take you longer to get there, okay, but it's not, it's, there's not, there's no right answer here, okay, only, you're going to decide how you want to live, all right, but there is a, there is a, a, a level there that, you know, um, like for me, I'll be honest, I have wanted a Ferrari since I was a little kid. And I used to have a poster on my wall. I was actually showing Caitlin it when we were on, uh, on uh, vacation. I was like, that's because we were in a restaurant. There's another tangent for you. We were in a restaurant that had all these Ferrari posters and like Le Mans posters and everything like that. It was like the kind of the theme of the restaurant. I'm like, I had one that looked almost exactly like that. And I started telling her about like history of Ferrari and, and stuff like that. And, um, and I showed her the, the poster, and it was like pretty much ex exactly like that. But anyways, I can't afford that Ferrari. I will never buy that Ferrari. It's like $2 million now, okay? And if I had $2 million, I wouldn't buy a Ferrari. Don't be stupid, okay? But there are Ferraris out there that are like 60 grand. They're called Calif or Ferrari Californias, and they're not that old, okay? So, it, you know, like I said, you don't have to have, just because if you want a Ferrari, it doesn't mean you got to have the Enzo. That's $3 million, okay? Um, but you decide, the great thing about this like if you decide which one you want to choose, it's totally up to you, okay? So who feels like they're more like, you'd be fine with just what you got right now, you just don't want to work? Four people. Okay, five people. You guys are still awake, thank you. All right, who would want to, who wants to live it up a little bit more than right where they're at right now? All right. Who was like, yo, I could get rid of like half the crap I spend money on and, and I'd be happy? All right. Come on the podcast, man. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so, um, like I said, it's totally, up, it's totally up to you guys. There's no right answer here. Don't let Andy, you know, scare you into not wanting a nice car. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, like for me, I, I had a Toyota Camry. It was paid off. I only, at the time, I only had one parking spot. I bought my second house or third house. Uh, and I only had one parking spot at the time. And, but I had moved to the mountains, paid off the Camry. I had wanted a Jeep Grand Cherokee for probably going on like five years. And I had talked myself out of buying a Jeep Grand Cherokee before I ever even got into real estate. I test drove one. Well, I wasn't a Grand Cherokee, it was a Wrangler. But I test drove one back in like 2013. And I looked at the numbers, I was like, no. And then a couple years later, Looked at him again, I was like, no. A couple years later, looked at him again, no. And then finally, after I, I was now living on my, in my second house, I was living at that house for free, and I was still, I had three units, and I was, ca I was living at the house for free, and I was cash flowing $500 a month. And, and that's when I decided, I lived in the mountains now, and decided that, okay, now it's time, okay? So I took that 500 dollars a month and that I was cash flowing and got a new car. And he's looking at me like, you freaking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that car. Okay, it's parked right outside. I bought the one with the big Hemi in it because I nice wanted a big one, yeah. put pipes on it, and yeah. I drive, that thing makes me smile every time I stomp on the gas, okay? But it's getting old, that's why I need the Ferrari now. So. Um, What's funny is, yeah, now I need the Camry for the kid that's on the way. So, well, she does. So, um, anyways, don't let it stop you. I'm not saying don't go buy a car. I'm not saying, you know, don't go buy a Ferrari, don't go buy a Lambo, whatever. Like, if you want to live in a nice house and, you know, or if you want to live in a trailer because it can get you a nice car, you know, there's an there's a investor out here that this guy has done more flips than probably most any investors you know. He's got a ton of rental properties. Um, 
he he's probably a millionaire multi 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 times over he is living in a trailer and in, in, on the beach and in a mobile home park and he owns probably I don't know millions of dollars worth of real estate here out here in, in the Empire but he gets to walk onto the beach and surf every day with his with his kid you know and that's and that's totally fine like that's awesome who would want to do that I would be fine with that. I don't, you know, but you don't have to be. That's my point. They don't have to be fine with that. Like you can, if you don't, if that's not your dream, that's totally fine. It's got to be you. But you got to come up with it, okay? And it's better that you figure this out sooner rather than later, okay? Because if you just go blind down the road for for a while, you might end up somewhere you don't like, or that you're, you know, you're like, oh crap, I could have done that. Um, who? Like me, I mean, I, I, I never wanted to go into sales, you know, like I did outside sales for, for many, many years. Um, that wasn't my dream. I didn't, I didn't want to go into sales. Uh, but I got a really good job at a high school. I worked with them, James Hardy, if anybody knows who makes Hardy Backer. Um, I worked for them for like seven years. They put me through college, um, paid for ASU and all that. And I'm always, I will always be grateful for that. But that wasn't really my dream, and I just kind of blindly just stayed in that job for so long that by the time I was done and I graduated and, and I'd been in this job for seven years, and now my bills had crept up, because lifestyle creep, anybody heard of lifestyle creep? Okay, when your bills start creeping up, you go buy that, that Grand Cherokee, you go get the new house, you go, you know, the wife wants a new car or whatever, and you know, suddenly your bills are, are creeping up, right? Who's played cash flow? Okay. Who has played, who has had a, who's played the janitor? Who's played the doctor? Which one's easier? Janitor. The janitor. Why? Because they have lower expenses. So if your expenses are only $1,000 a month, let's say, it's gonna be a lot easier to get $1,000 a month of cash flow than if you're the doctor with a Beamer payment and a big old house and, a, and, and lots of student debt and you need $10,000 a month, it's gonna be harder, okay? But again, you gotta choose your hard. I mean, it's, it's really like if you, want, if you want what you want, you want what you want, you know? You don't wanna be left wanting. So, yes, Evan. Uh, years ago, Nick Blackwell had me write down, I was talking to him about our, didn't call the fire numbers, but just use your freedom number. Uh, I was at Nick's luncheon and uh, he, challenged me because I told him what it was, what I wanted it to be, and he pretty much laughed at me because he thought it was more than I needed. Yeah. Uh, and what happened is he says, I challenge you to go find out what your real number is that'll pay all your bills and you can live at least comfortably. I challenge you. He goes, I bet it'll be a lot less. And sure enough, it was almost half of what I thought it was. I had to check with Angela, go through some certain things, and <laughs> there was so much, there was so much, well, what it is is there's so much just frivolous spending that just from creep, where it creeps up. Oh, I don't need this anymore. Oh, why do I have this? And when you start really l looking at it, you realize, oh, yeah. holy hell, we could already, we're almost at that number right now. We could only tweak this, tweak that, another couple rentals, and anyway, it was an eye opener. And um, yep. uh, again. Yeah, so. and, like, and, and like you said, the, the, the frivolous spending, you know, like, it always, you heard like the saying, like stop, you know, stop spending the, the cup of coffee at, Starbucks, like the $5 cup of coffee at Starbucks, which is probably like a $15 cup of coffee now. But, um, you know, and you'll hear like, you hear millennials or whatever, like kind of snap back. Like, I, why, why can't I have like my, my coffee? Like it makes me happy, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I don't think it's really, it's really like, it's hard to get through that it's just a cup of coffee, but it's not, you know, it, it's, it's, it's that, I mean, it could be, you know, that, that adding up over, what is that, five times 30? You know, so it can, it can add up a lot very quickly. And we're going to talk about it a little bit too. That, you know, you might not need as much as you, you think, like Evan's talking about. All right? And that depends on a really, like, what's your why? Okay? Anybody know their why? You know why you're doing this? Other than freedom, but like, you know, your actual why, like what, what you want to get to or what you're going to do when you achieve it. Okay. My why for a long time, and I used to talk about this all the time, um, 
this is what got me really like, if I wanted to watch these guys on YouTube, I don't know if I'd be standing here. So, probably like eight years ago now, I stumbled on these guys on YouTube and I was in a sales job that I was miserable at. I hated it. Uh, I, was a, I was a recruiter. I jumped around to a couple different companies and I was just done with sales. I didn't like talking to 15,000 people a week and, and having to place people. Like I like people, I like talking to y'all, but like I'm mostly an introvert, <laughs> uh, which you know you might not think of being on stage and whatnot, but um, I really wasn't, I w it was not fulfilling to me to be a recruiter anymore, okay? Like I, um, I was just doing it for the money. There was nothing else in it that, that you, but I'd been in sales, I had gone down a path that I didn't really uh, plan and I was miserable, okay? Anybody level with that? Anybody been in that situation? Okay, so, so I watched these guys on YouTube. Uh, it was called SV Delos, and it was about a, a brother, uh, a guy and his brother. They bought a, uh, he, was a, he was an IT guy about when he was like 35 years old. And I was 30 at the time, 31, 32, something like that. Uh, this guy was like 35 years old. He bought a boat, um, quit, his, quit his job, bought a boat, and sailed around the world with his brother for, I mean, they're going on now 15 years something like that. And watching their show and watching YouTube and all that, like I was like, dude, I could do this. I could totally do this. Like I love to travel. I'm pretty handy like mechanically to be able to solve stuff with the boat. Um, and what he was doing it on was only $2,000 a month. That's what it cost at the time, you know, to, to be able to, just... now he bought, after he bought how much? How much is that boat? $400,000 $400, boat. Okay, so I was like, well, shit. Okay, so all I need to do though is get to two thousand dollars a month, or I mean, he bought a four hundred thousand dollars boat cash. Okay, he he like sold all his stocks and he he he's like a C level executive in, in an IT firm, so yeah, he cashed out his savings, the stock. Like, I didn't have that ability. I was literally like living beyond my paycheck at that point. Okay, um, but I was like, all right, I could get to two thousand a month. And maybe I'd, I'd have to finance the boat for another 2000 a month, okay? And that really was my why. I mean, you guys might laugh, but that was, I, I, I talked about that for probably years. I mean, there was like three or four years there that when we first started doing real estate, that that was my dream. I was like talking about the boat. I started taking scuba lessons. Um, you know, I started, I started going and looking at boats. I almost bought one twice, um, but I just wasn't ready. At the time, one guy sold it like right before I walked up after I'd driven for four hours down to San Diego and like Friday traffic. And I was standing on He's like, yeah, so it's sold after like, he told me he wasn't gonna sell it until I got a chance. And he sold it to the guy that was like leaving as I was walking up. I was like, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know, everything happens for a reason. Says I never, so I never bought the boat. I, I, you know, just held off, held off. There's not a lot of really good sailing here in Southern California to be honest with you, like what I was interested in was like, you know, the, the, the Caribbean, like the Caribbean. Like I, I wanted to go like to the tropical stuff. I didn't want to go dive like, and, that, and you know, these are things you find out like along the way is when I took the scuba classes, you know, the best, the, all the boats go out at like six in the morning. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> and I'm definitely not a morning person. And I'm definitely not a morning at 6 a.m. get on a boat go into the ocean a few miles and then jump into freezing ass water and go down 50 feet into colder water. I'm definitely not that guy. But I am, I, but I, I think I'm the guy, I haven't done it yet, but I think I'm the guy that can like go out to the Bahamas and like, you know, you know, you ever snor snorkeled? Yeah, yeah. So snorkel, you see all that stuff on the bottom and you're like, man, I want to get closer. Like, that's what I want to do. I don't want to go jump off in frigid waters in like a murky kelp forest in Catalina or whatever. Okay, so I found that out pretty quickly. I also went, um, I also went to Greece a few years ago and did a 14-day uh, sailing trip in Greece, where it was on a 52-foot yacht uh, with like six other people, and we jumped across all the Greek islands for two weeks. Okay, and that's the closest I've gotten to living this dream. And this was probably it was about four years in to my five-year plan to get a sailboat that I finally went and did this. And uh, I realized that there's no air conditioning on boats. <laughs> so when you're in the middle of the ocean 
and you're jumping around to different islands, it is not miserably hot, but it's pretty freaking hot. And it can be miserably hot sometimes. I was actually in like, it was only like 90s in Greece when I was there, but it gets up to like the one teens, you know? So um, there's that there. I, I, I learned about myself when I finally went and did it that I really, what I liked more was traveling and talking to people and new experiences. And it didn't really matter what it was on. It didn't matter. I didn't really like, the boat was cool, but it wasn't like, the end all be all of it. I think I was just chasing, you know, something else. So, but I think it's important on why, like, what is your why? Like, what do you want to do? Because time, you know, you can do a lot. What are you going to do? Just sit around and watch The Simpsons reruns all day or whatever your show is? I mean, I get, you could, you know, when you first retire, you might spend the first month just sitting on your couch and that's okay. But is that what you're going to keep doing? You know, so, so that was then. Like I said, I, at a certain point, I realized that that really wasn't exactly what I wanted. It wasn't, I was chasing the, uh, the boat, right? The boat wasn't really what I wanted. What I wanted was, um, what I wanted was the freedom, okay? And I, and I been, and that, but what was important about that is I, I could set my eyes on that and say, you know, live frugally and know that that was the goal, okay? When I, when that goal, but did the goal change? I guess this is my question that I'm asking. What was the goal? The goal was the freedom. It wasn't the boat. The boat was just the, the shiny object to put on the, on the pedestal in the future. That was like, kind of like the guiding light. But, and I'm still gonna get a boat someday, but, you know, that might take a few more houses. Maybe like 10. Um, we'll get you a kayak. I have a kayak. It's not scratching the itch. <laughs> so, um, you know what? Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit. So I have this thing that I have uh, called the fire dashboard. Who took my goals class last year? A few of you. So you, this might look a little familiar. Um, so, does it move over? All right, there's a, it's on the screen behind you guys too, so I'll try and show this. So this is, this is like, again, this was the original plan, okay? This was discretionary expenses here. So the way I, I do this tracker is that I have all these properties up here. I, for, this, for the argument here, this, you're just looking at net cash flow, okay? Things like utilities and mortgage payments and all that. Um, don't worry about that for right now, okay? That's, that's in a different slide on this sheet that you can't see, but it's there, okay? So the net cash flow you're looking at here is for the actual property after all expenses have been paid on that property, okay? Down here is your discretionary expenses. Over here is like uh, some debt. Uh, and then this I'm not really gonna get into right this second, but that is your monthly passive cash flow right there, which includes your notes and whatnot here. Okay, so five years ago, when the plan was still the boat, okay, that number was 4750. Okay, I got two thousand dollars for a boat payment, two hundred fifty for gas, thousand dollars for food, four hundred dollars for health insurance, all that stuff. And that included, because I was single at the time, that included a plan to take somebody with me. Okay? So I manifested that, she's sitting right there. But we're not doing the goat thing, or the, goat, the boat thing. <laughs> um, so 47.50 is kind of the, the number, or was the, that was my fire number, okay? I needed $4,700 to be able to go out on this boat and do whatever the hell I wanted forever, okay? That was, that's the fire number. That's what I used to call your fire number, is what did you need to live your life the way you want to live it? Okay, it's the, and it's the money above all of your, your really, your hard, what I call your like, your hard expenses, your core expenses. The stuff that you don't have a choice, that if you don't pay, you're homeless, okay? Or you're starving, like that, you can't, you can't really mess around with that, okay? The discretionary stuff like food here is like, that's, that's a little above. Like I, I could probably be 500, but I put 1,000 because I'd like to eat out, okay? Um, and then, excuse me, uh, 
And then so moving forward, this one, this is now. Okay? So now you'll see there's no boat. Okay, there's a Jeep payment. Okay, there's a little less food, but a lot more of this, okay? There's no massages on boats, so I figured I'd throw a massage in. Um, accounting, vehicle insurances, a lot of cars now, so a lot of insurance. And since we're having a baby, the baby's in there at $750 a month. You might laugh. <laughs> That's my side. <laughs> That's what I figured it on. All right, but what my point is here is, you know, miscellaneous is just whatever uh, that I didn't feel like breaking out on the sheet. Um, but you can see, and these, these numbers aren't, you know, these aren't exact. This is just uh, different examples here. Um, but what you'll see here is that, so this number plus this number, those are my, so my fire number is still, so what is that? 750 plus $4,300. About 5,000. So what, we're $300 off of the boat goal? So my life has completely changed, like my direction and what I'm basing my, my uh, numbers on has completely changed direction. There's no boat, there's no, there's no traveling. I know that sounds sad, but I'm not, it's not sad. Like it's, I'm having a baby and I'm excited about it. But like, you know, and there's, there's still some, what's that? We've all been here, brother. We thought we were going this way. Yeah, yeah, right? But, but it's okay, because part of this was like, I made this decision, what's funny is I made this decision before, um, before I met Caitlin. This decision that I, in the track that I decided to put myself on was honestly, and I knew it when I did it, or when I was thinking about doing it, is that I felt that my, my calling, if you want to call it that, to teach people to do what I did, and what I was able to do, and was very lucky to be able to do, and be financially independent through real estate, was higher than my calling to go get a boat. Okay, and I knew when I bought this place that I was pushing back that dream. Okay, so you're welcome. <laughs> so, um, and I don't regret any of it. It's been very, this has been a ton of fun. It's been very rewarding. Um, I love seeing everybody in here every week and, and working towards what you guys are working towards. And, um, but I do think it's important to, to, to be mindful of this stuff and, and stay on track a little bit, even if it goes sideways the numbers aren't changing because you decide, well, I'm gonna to get to that in a second. So also what I wanted to show you guys on here is you don't, what Evan was talking about, maybe you don't need what you think you need, okay? Because this is the same exact sheet from earlier, except now I've gotten rid of the car, the car with the payment, okay? Or maybe I've reduced that payment, okay? So now my number is only 4,300 instead of 5,000. And what I'm showing you guys this is that if you, if you actually lay this stuff out and look at it, there's probably stuff in there that you don't even know that you spend money on or so much money on. And that you might be closer than you think, okay? That instead of, between this sheet and that sheet, is that instead of getting another property and dealing with another tenant or another Airbnb or whatever, Maybe you could just get rid of the car. Or you have another large expense that you could just get rid of instead of getting to another property. Okay, the answer is not always more. It might be less, but it depends on what you have, you know, what's, what's going on in your life. Okay, but what changed? Like the numbers, the goal? The goal's still what? Did the numbers change? Yeah. A little bit. Okay, but overall, did the fire number change all that much? Not really, and I'm on a totally different path from where I was three years ago when I realized that maybe I didn't want a boat, you know? So, um, again, what was the goal? There we go. 
So remember that. Remember that. Remember what your goal is. Because every, you know, Evan's right, every cup of coffee or every, you know, expense is, could be pushing you back, you know. But you got to know why it is what you want or what, what it is you want. So, um, again, we're not going to, we're not going to go into like figuring out your exact fire number right now today. Um, you don't have to figure it all out today. But I encourage you to start thinking about it very, very seriously, okay, because it will guide you. Okay, it's if you're just going in blind and you're like, I just got to flip as many houses and as many houses as I want. Trust me, how many houses have we flipped that over the years that we're like, shit, or wholesale that we should have held on to if we would have done a different direction? Maybe we decided because this is a kind of a little bit of a tangent, but um, it is harder, it is harder to hang on to the house, it's not impossible. But the easy part is, is wholesaling. The easiest thing you can do is wholesale. You just get a check and you're done. Okay, second hardest is to flip it. There's a lot of risk and everything that goes into flipping. Okay, but it is the way everything works until, once you get, ex once you get experience at this and you know what you're doing, holding on to it is not that hard. Okay, but until you know how to do that, flipping and wholesaling seems insanely easier. Okay, but at the end of the day, once you get into this further down the line, you're gonna realize that you should have kept them. <laughs> Not all of them. There is there are certain ones that you know they're it's worth selling, or you were in a position that you had to you had to wholesale that house, okay, for whatever reason. But I would have if we I. I would have, if I could start over, I would have looked at things a little bit differently from the beginning versus um, just focusing so hard on getting a savings together to be able to purchase a house that way. I would have done it. I would have done it differently. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Was right. So was Mick right? Yes. In some ways, in some ways, I, I do think there's a time and place to to wholesale and and flip and you know in a lot of ways that can get you started because it's very it's not impossible, but it takes time to build up your lending resources and your skills and your ability to even know what the hell you're doing. You know, as far as a house, it's a house. I mean, there's a lot of systems and things and everything that go into a house and, and all of it. It takes time to learn, okay? Some of you might already have it to, to already. But anyways, you don't have to figure this all out today. Um, but again, I, I want you guys to, to really start thinking about it and have, a, have an idea. No, no. <laughs> I want you to have an idea of what you're, what you're eventually getting at, okay? And, and have a number in mind. And look at your expenses. I challenge every one of you to go and look at your expenses all the, you know, tonight, next week, soon, and see what you're spending your money on, okay? Because, oh, wrong, wrong thing. Um, but if you want to figure it out sooner, Okay, rather than later, I am going to do a class uh, coming up here. For those of you that went to my goals workshop last year, I'm going to do it again. Uh, it's just going to be me this year. I partnered up with somebody last year, but um, I'm going to do it just myself this year because there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to go in deeper to that I didn't really get a chance to because we were kind of short on time. So I'm going to be doing it a lot sooner this year also. Okay, when I did this last year, I think it was in the end of November. Um, so we're going to do it a lot sooner. Uh, in September, okay? So September 21st and 22nd, that is gonna be nine to five. And we're gonna dial in, we're gonna fire focus your why. We're gonna dial in and focus on your why. Uh, we're gonna figure out what your fire number is. You're gonna bring in, you're gonna have homework before the class. You're gonna bring in your expenses and we're gonna work on your fire number. We're gonna figure it out in the class, okay? We're gonna establish some goals. We're gonna set some, some parameters up. Uh, we're gonna talk about short-term goals, long-term goals, Ideally, we're gonna put a five-year plan together. So if you haven't, if those of you that are brand new or maybe you're a few steps into this, we're gonna put something together that says, I wanna be financially independent in five years from now or three years from now, depending on whatever it is you want, okay? And we're gonna stay on track with some follow-ups and whatnot. It does include the, uh, the Fire Dashboard software. So that stuff that you saw on Excel um, it's version 2.0. I've been working on it. So those of you that have it already, you're going to get the new updated version. I've been working on it all year uh, to kind of work out some bugs. As some, one of the big things I got last year was like, we want a section for notes. So now that's in there. Um, there's also some other updates to the tracking and how all the numbers work together. 
um, as well. And it also comes with lunch both days. So um, I, I got a deal for you. Who wants a deal? You guys want a deal? Okay. So right now, oh, it messed up. The slide messed up. It ruined it. Boo. Can't do anything right around here. All right, so Pete's class is $8.97, okay? I am going to be selling this workshop for $4.97, okay? But tonight, for you guys, I am going to do, if you buy a ticket to Pete, you get my class for free, okay? So you get a two-for-one deal. Um, you will not only get to see Pete for two full days right here, you get me for two full days to help build out everything you learn, hopefully from not only John Schaub, but Pete also, and what we're gonna, you know, everything that you've been learning here at the Fire Center for however long you've been a member. So I'm gonna do that for you for free if you buy a ticket to Pete. Um, and how about a bigger deal? Yeah. Ricardo, you want more? Is that not enough? More. <laughs> Is that enough, you want more? All right. So you'll get the Freedom Workshop. I'm calling it the Freedom Goal Shop. Nobody wants to work at a, at a weekend, right? So we're gonna call it a Goal Shop. Um, you're going to get that for free. That's basically an example of how, how bad I want you guys to, I really want you guys, like, like I said, my tangent went when I bought this place, okay? I want you to be able to be financially independent to real estate, okay? That's why I'm offering this, okay? I came back from this trip going, man, I really want people to do this, okay? I, I, it gets lost sometimes. We all start talking about, you know, notes and, and, and it's all great, but like we're here to fire. Okay, that's the, that's the goal. All right, so you get that one for free. I'll also throw in the recording. Who needs a financial calculator upgrade? Or doesn't even know how to use one? <laughs> Refresh. Okay, so I did a financial calculator class a couple months ago. Um, I recorded it, okay? That, that class alone is gonna be like two, 200 bucks the next time I do it, okay? Uh, but you'll get the last recording, so you get the, the Freedom Workshop coming up. You get a recording of the financial calculator. Uh, class that I did a couple weeks ago, plus the manual. So you get two, basically, three classes for one. So you buy a ticket to Pete, you get the other two classes for free. Okay? So if you want that deal, all you have to do is buy a ticket to Pete. You don't have to do anything extra. You don't have to sign up or do anything else. You just go buy a ticket to Pete, and I will make sure that you get those two classes in your inbox. Okay? And again, that is tonight only unless I feel like a little generous tomorrow morning, but it's probably gonna be tonight only, okay? So um, that takes me to the end of that presentation, guys. If you have any questions, I'll be up here to answer some questions, but I'm gonna leave that up and end it there. All right, thank you for coming. Thanks.